So everyone knows that water freezes at 32F, but sometimes in order to innovate, you gotta think outside of the box. And what we do is actually we're working with liquids below 32F, but they're still not frozen. With our technology, we're able to get it to freeze or slush instantly. And this will still be colder than 32F. Hi, my name is Dale, co-founder of Supercooler Technologies, and today I'm here to uh, introduce you to the uh, founder of Supercooler Technologies. Um, his name is Douglas Shantich, and um, he's just a really passionate guy. At the age of um, 13, they would, you know, he and his brothers would go to um, to school with their dad, who was a professor at EKU at that time, and they would, you know, sit in classes with him and they would play on the computer just from the their whole understanding of science you know and space and everything just kind of develop um, he learned how to auto code basic software and um, ever since then he just have a huge passion for science which led him to study physics space system and management and space system engineering all this um, helped him to pursue his career at NASA uh, where he was a team leader for launch system engineer and um, specialized in cryogenic liquid oxygen. Hi, my name is Austin Keaton. I am the Director of Strategic Partnerships here at Supercooler Technologies and I've been involved with the company since late 2016 um, and I work with all of our investors and our partners like Coca-Cola uh, and helping them make this dream happen and I got involved when we were actually doing the Indianapolis field test back in 2016, where we had 20 of these machines rolled out in 20 different Speedways convenience stores uh, all across Indianapolis. And I fell in love with what we were doing and how we were bringing a new uh, sort, sort of experience to the consumers at all these different locations and seeing the excitement that people were experiencing uh, using the uh, Arctic Coke machines. Either way, it was like a long line. We was out here to like the middle of the night, possibly sometimes four o'clock in the morning, eating chicken or whatever it was to keep our fuel up. There was Tyler. We were back here and we were putting epoxy or whatever we needed to get these done for the testing. When we went to Indiana, when we went to Indiana, we just totally killed it. Sales went out the roof. It was a great time, you know? That's just how it started. A vision of the man. It all started when I met Doug at Panera Bread. And he took this drink. I think it was a Sprite, because I always love Sprite. And I got a little Sprite dance too, but I ain't gonna show nobody right now. All right, but he took the Sprite and slammed it on the table and it just, like a transformer, had me then. And it's still here, still the same vision. I'm just saying. All right, I'm Tyler. I'm the director of manufacturing for Supercooler. Um, started probably about almost two years ago now. Yeah. Right now we're going upstairs. This is mostly the uh, programming and R&D department mostly. This is where we uh, do a lot of our development on um, programming and getting things figured out once we got a basic concept for them. We actually um, ended up using some of these 3D printers to make parts such as this, which were some of the first renderings and um, models of the nucleator. And, uh, and what we ended up doing was ultimately rolling over to a plastic injection mold where they end up doing a silk screen on the side and gives it a lot cleaner, you know, sleeker profile than, uh, than this. So some things that we actually had to do to prove that we as a company could sell to Coca-Cola um, some of our electronic parts that, like the smart board that we use in our nucleator is we had to develop a test apparatus uh, to prove that our smart boards were almost uh, foolproof and, and wouldn't fail out in the actual field in the convenience store. So this is one of the test apparatuses that we built and we have one of our smart boards that goes inside of our nucleator that causes the transformation process from a liquid to a slush firing and what we're simulating here is someone pushing this button every three seconds and we've had this firing for, for a long time and we're actually at 5.9 million fires as of December 12th, so of course we'll be a little bit more than that now, but we're proving through basically a burnout test, we're wanting to know how long this will go, and this is far beyond any 
uh, amount of pushes that we would expect to see out in the field. And we'll show you that these still work. You know, I'll grab something that's pretty visible and I'll do a sprite so that you guys can see it. And if we tilt it and put it on here, we see that it's still transformed. And this is almost six million button fires later of this smart board. So these are some of the things that we have to do in order to uh, give Coke confidence that our parts won't fail. Hi, my name is Carl Duffman. I work in design and development for Supercooler Technologies. I've been working here um, for about a year and a half now, um, ever since our Indianapolis field test. And I want to show you a few things. Most of our projects begin with an idea. And they often involve in the earliest stages an Arduino Uno, some sort of self-designed simple, simple or complex circuit. And then they come together with programming and a variety of things into a prototype. And in the earliest stages, our prototypes can look pretty messy. The thing we're concerned with is, does it work? And then from there, we streamline processes, we clean things up, and we end up with something that's actually produced um, at Sierra Circuits, um, a precision factory in um, California. We end up with something much cleaner, much more professional, and much more ready for market. Hello. My name is Jeff Persing. I'm Director of Engineering at Supercooler Technologies. I was introduced to SCTI about two years after I graduated from high school, and the first time I saw a Coca-Cola transform in front of my eyes, I knew I was going to be hooked. And I've been captivated by what it takes to make a successful product like what you see today. Now, Arctic Coke doesn't come together by chance. There's a lot of challenges that have to be overcome, and it takes precision to get an Arctic Coke into your hands. If you go too warm, nothing's going to happen. And if you go too cold, everything's going to freeze. So what we've done at Supercooler Technologies is a lot of research into the precise temperature range for each beverage that it will give you that perfect transformation and nucleation that you expect from an Arctic coat. We've also developed what's called a nucleator. At the time, there was nothing that could create successful nucleation inside of a bottle without opening it. So we got to work and did not rest until the job was done and we had the perfect solution. And it may take hundreds, thousands of hours or more to create whatever it is you're passionate about. And whether it's an idea inside your head that's brand new or something that people have cherished for over a hundred years, it needs you. Well, this is how it all began in uh, 2009. Uh, Douglas was just completely tired of his drinks not cold enough, pouring um, them over ice. And um, he was just like, okay, I'm just gonna stick some of this drink um, in the freezer. And it was a time he got lucky and he was like, he opened the drink and it sloshes. And he was like, hey, you know, what is this? So that was, you know, I can't, I, that's where I think, you know, it was just kind of like a, uh, a moment where it was like, oh my gosh, you know, I have to be able to do this all the time. From there, he just started, you know, working on it and doing all different kind of research. And we just did testing all through the night, you know, day after day, weeks after weeks, month after months. And um, he was just like, this is what I want to do. And, you know, he quit his job. He told me, are you in to do this like full time? I was like, yeah, I'm in. And of course, you know, things were not quite easy when we started. There were a lot of difficulties we have to face. There are so many times when we think, yes, we've got this, you know, we know what's going to happen. We know how this is going to work. And then uh, you put together whatever it is you have to put together and you don't get the result that you think that you're gonna get and that's when we have to go back to the drawing board that's when Doug, Douglas have to go back to the drawing board and some of the other engineers have to go back to the drawing board and do testing all over again or change something in the software what I want you guys to understand is that you have to be persistent you have to you have to be patient you have to do it day in and day out there were nights of 
they were sleepless nights we just walk over and over again to get a perfect uh, product but the fact is knowing that there is going to be a brighter future knowing that you know somebody's gonna hear somebody want to listen to our story that is somebody that is gonna be inspired by what we go through by what we're going through right now that is what matters and that's why we keep going every day not giving up do it day in and day out be consistent be passionate love what you do and just walk on that thing if you believe in it and you know it's your passion then you have to work hard to do it regardless of how many no's you get regardless of how many discouragement you get if you know that's what you want to do and you have a plan you have a vision you have a dream walk towards it i want you guys to believe in yourself and do the same thing and you would see what comes after a hard walk